Dear students, in this video, we will discuss the first law of thermodynamics and the concept of internal energy. The first law of thermodynamics was first stated by Mayer and Helmholtz in 1842. It is based upon experimental observation and human experience. This is also known as the law of conservation of energy. This law may be stated in any of these following ways. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. Or it can also be stated as when one form of energy disappears, exactly the same amount of energy appears in some other form. Or you can also say that the sum total of mass and energy in the universe is a constant though these are interconvertible and that's why it's known as the law of conservation of energy. Since the first law of thermodynamics is derived from natural human experience or experimental observations, let's see some energy transformations that we can see in real life. The most common example that we can see is the conversion of light energy into chemical energy in plants during photosynthesis. The light energy from the sun is absorbed by the plants and is converted into glucose. So here the light energy is converted into chemical energy. An example in which the electrical energy is converted into heat energy is in a water heat. So like this, we can see many examples where one form of energy is converted into another form. In terms of thermodynamics, we always speak of energy transformations in the form of heat and work. Both are forms of energy transfer. The following points justify the first law of thermodynamics. The first point is that it is impossible to construct a perpetual motion machine that is a machine which does work without consuming energy. Men have failed to construct such a machine that is a machine which does work without using any energy and this proves the validity of the first law of thermodynamics. The second justification is that it was James Joule who worked to find out the relation between heat and work and he proved experimentally that for every 4.184 joules of work done in the system one calorie of heat is produced so this also proves the validity of the first law of thermodynamics now we'll discuss an important concept in thermodynamics called the internal energy Internal energy is defined as the sum of all forms of molecular energies of a substance. Usually it is denoted by U. Suppose we have some gas molecules in a beaker. The gas mo molecules will be randomly moving in all directions. Now due to their motion they will possess kinetic energy. Since the gas molecules are all interacting with each other, they will also possess some potential energy. So internal energy is a sum of this kinetic energy and potential energy. Now the kinetic energy will be due to the translational motion of the gas molecules. It may undergo rotational motion, vibrational motion and etc. So the internal energy is the sum of all these energies plus the potential energy. Now if you consider the gas molecules to behave ideally, we have seen that for an ideal gas the potential energy is zero because they do not interact with each other in the case of an ideal gas. So the potential energy is zero. Therefore the internal energy for an ideal gas will only be equal to the kinetic energy. Now let's see what happens when some heat is added to this system. So when we add heat to the gas molecules in the beaker, the gas molecules will start moving 
more vigorously because their kinetic energy increases with increase in temperature. So applying heat energy will increase the kinetic energy and since kinetic energy is equal to the internal energy this will cause an increase in the internal energy or a change in the internal energy. So internal energy is the sum of all forms of molecular energies that is the sum of kinetic plus potential energy. And if we consider the case of an ideal gas, in an ideal gas the particles will not interact with each other hence its potential energy is zero. So the internal energy is equal to the kinetic energy. Now with increase in temperature or we, if we apply heat energy that will increase the kinetic energy which in turn causes a change in the internal energy. Now let us see what are the properties of internal energy. We can only determine the change in internal energy that is delta U. The absolute value of internal energy cannot be determined. Internal energy is an extensive property. Also internal energy is a state function that is its value or the change in internal energy depends only on the initial and final state of the system. It is path independent. These three points are to be remembered while understanding internal energy. Now let us see the first law of thermodynamics in the mathematical form. We have already stated the first law of thermodynamics that is energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can only be transferred from one form to another. Mathematically the first law of thermodynamics is expressed as delta U is equal to Q plus W. When W is the work done on the system, Q is the energy transferred as heat to the system and delta U is the resulting change in the internal energy of the system. We have already seen what is internal energy and uh, we have seen that we can only measure the change in the internal energy. So this change in internal energy is equal to the energy transferred as heat plus the work done on the system. So this is the mathematical statement of first law of thermodynamics. Consider some gas molecules inside a cylinder fitted with a piston. Now if we add some heat energy to the system, let it be Q. So out of this uh, energy, a part of it is used to increase the internal energy of the system and the rest is consumed in doing the expansion work or pressure volume work because during expansion the volume will be changing from V1 to V2. Okay. So this condition is expressed in the form of the mathematical statement of first law of thermodynamics that is the change in internal energy delta U is equal to Q plus W. Here the work done is positive, W is positive when work is done on the system and it is negative when work is done by the system. Similarly, the heat transfer Q is positive when heat is added to the system and Q is negative when heat is lost by the system. Now for a process involving only pressure volume work, we have already seen that W equals minus P into delta V where P is the pressure and delta V is the change in volume. So the first law can be written as delta U equals it is Q plus W. So instead of W write minus P delta V. So that is delta U equals Q minus P delta V. Now if the process is carried out at constant volume then the change in volume or delta V is equal to zero. That is P delta V equals 0 or work done as 0. That means delta U is equal to Q V. That is the internal energy change is equal to the heat absorbed or evolved at constant volume. So V denotes the volume. So delta U is equal to Q V. In this class we have discussed the concept of uh, internal energy, energy transformations, and have stated the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics gives the relation between the internal energy, 
and the two modes of energy transfer that is heat and work.